Hi, everybody. It's Linda. Hi. And we've got Hi. Sean. We've got his beautiful mother, Nancy, and Andre from uh, Astrology Alert, who's probably going to have took a little look at the signs. We're not really all political. We're going into more uh, uh, numbers, which is Sean's specialty. And Nancy knows a lot, even though you say it's him, you know a lot about it. I just don't talk about it a lot. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so what's the 411, my friend? You said there was some good news. So you're talking to me? Yeah. No, I'm so talking we, to Joe down the street. We, we all got good news. Um, so yeah. Uh, so the big question I've been getting since the convention was, did uh, Kamala get a bump? Yeah. Right? And and so today I kind of addressed it now that I've got enough data to really look at and looked at all the polling. And um, so normally the the primaries are all wrapped up in the general election starts about mid-March because that's after Super Tuesday and we kind of know who our main two candidates are going to be. So you've got five months of that before there's... Uh -oh, uh, he's freezing. Uh, he's freezing again. Uh, so what happens is you go up. Oh, okay, you're the nominee. Now you're just flat. Attention. And uh, so what happened was because Kamala was only in the race for six weeks, she was still doing this. So okay. after the convention, she just kept doing this. I, I view it more like a rocket, where you have a, like a three stage rocket. And the first stage is everything before the convention. Then, right. the, then it gets released, and the second stage picks up. The rocket's still going in the same direction. Right. There's no bump because you never plateaued. Right. So what we're seeing is just an expression of more energy heading in the exact same direction it was headed the five weeks leading up to the convention. So when people say, "Oh, there was no bump," um, that's because Kamala was never flat. In order to know what a bump looks like, you have to have a plane to judge it by and we didn't have that now trump on the other hand he got a one point bump that's now gone what and that's like 45 got a one point bump? yeah he got like the 45 46 percent approval rating and now he's back down to 44 that and, was his, which is right where he started that was his paul kogan bump that was his whole <laughs> bump <laughs> hmm. i don't know yeah. nancy i'm feeling pretty good how about you Oh yeah, I've been feeling I've been feeling really good for a while, even before Joe left. Mm -hmm. I felt I felt like so much there's Andre, I'll tell you this, there's so much more lightness in the planets above us right now. Yeah. And I've been talking to I do I do personal readings and I've been reading a lot of people who've been saying they either feel this incredible download and that they're they feel like they're standing on a solid base and they're getting a download of more information. Or they're beginning to understand more light is coming in. They're not sure what to do with it. Mm -hmm. But my really in, friends that live in enlightenment, and that's kind of where we live. We're just feeling this shower of light coming in right now. And I haven't felt that in a year. I, I had about six months of kind of not feeling real great. I mean, I wasn't physically ill, but I wasn't feeling real great. I woke up last Sunday and I realized all of me is back. I don't know where that part of me went. But all of me is back and I can see all the colors and feel the crystals and be a part of it all again. So that's wonderful. So I, I wouldn't come back unless it was good news, guys. I'm yeah. <laughs> How about you, Andre? What astrologically, what are you looking at? What am I looking at? Well, I what can, I'm looking at is you understand what Nancy and I are feeling about like Yeah, well, it, I'm assuming you you're referring to the post like to mid-July, like what after right after mm -hmm. right yeah and and i mean in a way i have to say that's pretty logical i mean sean will probably tell you how can you not be positive when in his in his industry if you see like hundreds of thousands of volunteers you got to think well this can't be bad this has to be a good it's thing. over a million now million. yeah exactly exactly you know and, and the money rolling in and tons of money which by the way now that's a that's a question i have which is that it sounds like the trump team realizes that they're really their only path is to hang on to everything they have which is not going to be easy because north carolina is looking pretty threatening because they have a nut job running for for uh, the governorship yeah and it's tight anyway i mean they barely won it last time so that's their first problem but let's say they still won north carolina then they 
their plan is win Pennsylvania and win Georgia because they don't have enough money. So they're putting all their money into those two states. I, I, my feeling is they're not going to win Pennsylvania, but they're trying really hard yeah. to do that. And so they could lose everything else. And that's why I saw these graphs where they're way up, uh, you know, they're being overspent and all the battlegrounds, except for those two there, they, they're matching Kamala and they're, you know, dollar for dollar, they're trying really hard to see if they can flip them because they lost them last time, but it was pretty close, right? But what is your sense of that? Uh, that that'd be a question I would have because I, I, you know. So, so the last thing I read was that Kamala had 15 campaign headquarters in rural Pennsylvania and Trump had five. Right. I don't know how accurate that data is today. I know that they're still throwing more money into Pennsylvania. I know they're throwing money into Wisconsin. I know they're rebuilding areas of of field that they didn't think to even bother with, but now they're just running up the score. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, on my channel, I've done a, a series of videos of just um, the, the law changes. Oops, Oops. We got cut out a little bit. We, yeah. oh, by the way, and his channel the changes is... that Michigan made literally means that they're not. I'm sorry. That's okay. Say it again. You got cut out. Oh, so um, the, the the laws they changed in Michigan and Wisconsin um, uh, both make it super hard for the Republicans to do their shenanigans, right? But if you look at Georgia. Georgia, they really did some real bad stuff. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Florida, they done some really bad stuff. They've got uh, commissions of just guys who are, I swear to God, I'm reading the laws from Florida's uh, changes. And the only thing that comes to mind is the animal farm, the wow. book. Wow. So you remember the pigs took over and they yeah. had the dogs as the enforcers. That's what's happened in Florida. They've got these, the you know, DeSantis, and he's created literally this group of enforcers that goes in and just can can shut down a polling location. Wow. Are they going to be able to get away with that? Look at where it goes to the Supreme Court. Do you think they're yeah. going to get away with it? Oh, they'll absolutely get away with it, 100%. But so, so we could lose Florida, even though eh, it's We're probably going to lose it anyway. But, mm. Okay. But and we I might still win it. That's the thing. It's like... Those kind of tactics will work when it's like a 1% margin, but you get two, 3% margins and it doesn't even matter what the hell they do. Yeah. Now, I just recently heard that I think Ohio is 10 plus for Trump. I think that's- I saw a seven. I think seven's more realistic. Also, I never expected Ohio or Texas to go. Well, I think Texas is closer than Ohio right now. Really? Especially after Liz Cheney yesterday. She endorsed yeah. Colin Allred. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, Liz Cheney endorsed Colin Allred. Dick Cheney's voting for Harris. Um, there's a lot of Repu there's actually a divided Republican Party here in Texas. Wow. So uh, people don't really know that, but it's super crazy divided. You got the lieutenant governor, and then you've got the the leader of the house. I mean, it's a there's a whole giant, and then you've got the attorney general doing his crazy stuff. Yeah. Um, you've got a bunch of nonsense, and you've got huge suburbs so one of the things that i look at and i've got a show on i do i've done a series of shows just on the demographics and tell everybody real quick and i'll post it on here the name of your show oh, it's c is in cat l s b is in boy politics it's clsb and i'll politics. post it on this too yeah so i look at demographics so the uh the the age of the united states is around 38.5 texas is 35 years old we're we're all we couldn't almost go to call high school with the rest of the United States. We're a much younger state than people think. Okay. And we're expected to get five more congressional seats by 2030. And that's all Hispanic and and what's well, mostly all Hispanic uh uh, uh population. Mm -hmm. So um I mean Catholics, what are you gonna do? So yeah. um so what we've got is a real interesting trend. You got these suburbs out there that these Republicans have been anchoring their state house seats and congressional seats on because they got to have population. They have to have about 780,000 people per congressional district. So that's what they've been anchoring them on. And these these uh, suburbs have been growing at 10% a year. 
That means if you haven't canvassed a, a, a precinct and over uh, two, four years, you honestly have no idea what's going on out there. So, um, so that amount of growth, plus uh, you're looking at just the demographic swing and getting it much younger. And COVID killed off a lot of old Republican. Voters. Well, they trend more Republican. We got old Democrat voters too. There's old like Democrats three. in Texas. I know one. I know. <laughs> I'm related to at least one. Actually, I was I thinking of Florida, but yeah. But yeah, but so Texas has got some real demographic problems if you're Republican. Because you still have to have X number of people per congressional district. And uh, they've been... Uh, I have a whole show on my channel just about gerrymandering and the different types. And some are what you do at the beginning and some are what you do at the end. So they've been cracking since really 92, uh, breaking up populations into, um, but now those populations are so big, they have to pack them. So they're basically creating democratic ghettos where they didn't have to before. Okay. So, so that's the last thing you can really do demographically speaking. To gerrymander right. um, before you're kind of out of ideas. Well, and then the, and then what they do is they they'll change the lines, and in the legislature you have to live in the district in which you are serving, unlike yeah. Congress where you don't where you do not. Um, they'll they'll move the lines and put popular Democrats out of blue districts and into red districts for gerrymandering purposes. That's the other thing that they've been doing a lot. Yeah, we had a friend named Harriet that that happened to. Mm -hmm. Oh, I, I mean, I, there's a dozen candidates I know that that's happened to. So what about Wisconsin that you said you were working on Wisconsin? Well, Wisconsin's looking great. Uh, they've, uh, they're, the, the unions are looking to get about a million volunteers out between now and election day. Um, they want to knock on about half a million doors uh, with, uh, with paid cam paid focus, professionally run canvassing. Uh, probably they'll end up with more than that. Um, no, Wisconsin and Wisconsin's population is relatively small. So that kind of energy into, into such a small bucket can do a whole lot. Also, Wisconsin changed a lot of their laws and that, that make it a lot better yeah. for them to be able to vote and just the process and access to mail ballots and stuff changes a lot of that. So Wisconsin did a lot of the front end work to help this now this now part right so nancy have you had any feeling on the debate are you getting a good feeling um <clears throat> yeah i'm i'm gonna watch it as much as i hate that voice and you can only mute when the other side's on you got um but i really think it's gonna be i, I think it's if if i still have he might not show up really mm -hmm. i still have i mean when I flip the cards, and now these are the cards I'm using for politics currently, my chubby bunny. <laughs> it may, may, may be bad news, but it's not so ugly. Uh, that, but It's very uh, cute, bad news. Bad news. But one thing is, every, I think it's going to, it's going to set a fire under some people. I think it, I just don't know that it's going to discourage MAGA. When you see the kind of loyalty you saw at the economics club in New York, which is, you know, that's big stockbrokers and stuff. And he answers one question. What do you want to say about child care is oh child care is child care, you know? It's, um, no, he said it's not really that expensive. That's what he said. Yeah, well, he wouldn't yeah, know. It's like well, and let, me put, let me put it this way. In Austin, to put both of my children in daycare and you were still on a waiting list was almost three grand a month. Oh, it's a house payment when you were little, sweetie. More than a rent, yeah. Yeah, it's more than. I was. It was, it was the equivalent. Of, it would have been the equivalent of their rent, but I sold my services and became the cook and the person who developed their diet and backed up the woman who ran the daycare. So oh, my two, good for I mean, you. But yeah, I sold cool. my services, but that's personal. But anyway, uh, now Andre, <laughs> what do you say about? Uh, yeah, I I I like the debate for Kamala. Uh, for sure, I know from you know, the one planet position, it's just pretty fast moving, but Mercury is in a really good place for her, meaning 
you know, she'll be able to say what she needs to say. And that's really mm -hmm. enough because yeah. if your communication is strong, that's what a debate is. I mean, yeah. You're able to mm -hmm. put it out. And the other thing is that the thing that now makes me suspicious about the, you know, the outcome, I was waiting to see, are they going to sentence the guy or not? Because that's that period that starts, uh, it was a swath of, uh, you know, days that starts just after the debate for about 10 mm -hmm. days. Well, that's no longer on the table. So then I'm looking at this and it is not good for Trump between about the, just after the debate for about 10 days, he's raging and screaming and yelling right. extra hard. And notice that he's already started because it, that was the, it's, it's Mars and cancer. It right. Just went into cancer like very recently and he started he started to do the thing with E.G. and Carol again yesterday. He went on and on about how the whole thing is, you know, um, is uh, made up. And, you know, you can hear him tell the story and you think, no, it's not made up. He's already <laughs> been convicted. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, and it, the remarkable thing is that is that he's really angry about the his lawyers are saying that the Access Hollywood thing should not have been presented. Well, the Access Hollywood thing describes exactly what Dean Carroll says he did to her. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, so that's yeah, you why. You're more relevant than that. Yeah, no, I know, I know. Yeah, so I mean, we know what his game is. It's a, it's Kamala's right to say it's an old game, but he's the type of person you have to be all there, you know, to deal with because his favorite tactic is filibustering. He just mm -hmm. talks and talks and talks and throws things and throws things. And what better than a prosecutor who, you know, there, there are people that are trained to hone in on, okay, where's this person going so you can counter it. I'm not 100% sure when I hear about, you know, people saying her strategy, this and that, because I hear on the one hand, oh, she's going to be really serious and just talk about policy, but she's also going to get under his skin. I don't know how you do both of those together, um, but I do hope, I honestly hope she confronts him and insults him and, you know, uh, just let him talk, right? That's and what we it, all want to say to him. Yeah, no, and, and when he does, I hope that, because he's going to say some crazy things, I hope she, you know, she fires in back. And basically, debate, in the last debate, he lied every 54 seconds. Oh, oh yeah, no, he's he lies. Well, it, it was a funny thing that I saw about how someone said, he doesn't quite lie at the rate that he breathes. It's a little slower than that. Instead of being 12 breaths per minute, he lies at about two two lies per minute, but two lies per minute, you know, that's in an hour, you've done 120. I mean, it just really oh, yeah, works. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I, it's, I, uh, I just want him to be just malicious and mean to the women race. Ooh, oh, I, I hope he default. does. That's his default. That's well, what he does. The, I mean, the thing is, though, that, that that in his chart, I always thought this one placement where he's really compromised with women was enough for him to lose. You don't even need the rest. And the rest is bad, 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 and, and you know, including what uh, Nancy's saying, there is a possibility this guy goes down in flames completely because the chart has that too. It's just, you know, the only thing we've seen though with his health, I think that that's his dementia. He's really downtrended, you know. He has trouble now stringing sentences together. He goes off on total tangents. I think with the child, uh, the child care, that was a total word salad. It made zero sense. No, no, no. Uh, what, what what he made sense with was like his opinion was there wasn't a problem. Yeah, because that he was, was gonna. His, that was his, right, his right. Burger. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, there was no problem because they're they're gonna make so much money. I think there was a connection to the tariffs or something, some insane well, thing. Yeah, that the he, whole thing about tariffs is so bizarre. Andre, what do you see about his final sentencing sentencing date as they've set it up in December? It's not good then. No, I thought it was worse for him. He'd have been better off to have gone now because then his judges would have his his attorneys would have had a chance to try to get an appeal up to the Supreme Court before Election Day. Mm -hmm. And by cutting it short where they did, he cannot get this is I'm repeating a lawyer that I trust. Mm -hmm. He cannot get an appeal up to them. And that's that's one reason why he lost it. I think that was their next gambit. Oh, absolutely. So, why is that? Why can't he get an appeal? Because, there's been because no ruling. he's not sentenced. Yeah, there's no ruling. There's no right, but ruling. but what difference does it make if he if because say you have he, to appeal something? You have nothing to appeal yet. Right, but if he let's say that they sentence him in November, why can't he appeal it then? Well, he'll do it then. 
So then, I mean, isn't well, that no, what he'll, he'll, he'll appeal it in December? But the problem was he could have gotten it up to the Supreme Court that we have right now fast enough for them to negate the entire charge. Yep. Like they tried before to before the that. election, yeah. Andre, before the November 5th date. Right. If they wrote, you know, I mean, after all, they decided Bush v. Gore in 24 hours, they can decide a lot if they really want to. Yeah. And this blocked them. And I really think the way he reacted afterwards, that was their next gambit. But oh, why yeah. were they pushing this judge to give them a reprieve? Why? I don't know. Oh, they were just, they always have to throw something in. Right. Yeah, but then I actually was them. happy that Judge Marchand said, yeah, okay. Well, well, I'll do it in November. Almost like it. Do it in December. Oh, I thought it, he's going to announce. Oh, November twenty eighth. You're right. Yeah. It's November twenty eighth. Yeah, that's near. That's near a, a Saturn station. Oh, the good. other thing is <laughs> the other. Thing, and I both that. know what that means. Whoa. The other thing <laughs> is, is he now if they wait, the if he's not president, he's not going to be president. That's the main thing. Right. So when he goes in there, he's just Joe Blow, a loser. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well. No, 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 no. He won't be a loser because it was rigged. Oh, that's right. yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, in a way, though, see, this is where you have to be paying attention, where it's kind of like also with the states. Like if you ever see them starting to campaign in Texas, you know, Texas is in trouble or whatever state if they suddenly go there. Mm -hmm. um, and it's the same with anything that they're saying, uh, like Trump back in 2020, he kept saying, bringing up the rig thing because he knew he was behind. At some point, he may start again if he feels like, okay, this is going to go the wrong way. Uh, that That's the tell, you know, he hasn't the quite other, yet, but. The other point that I was going to make that I totally forgot in midstream is that this would have might have enhanced his people if he got a good sentence. They might have said, you're picking on him, and everyone would have turned around. It would have been worth a point or two. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah no, it's, it's possible. That's the thing with, yeah, it's, it's just remarkable. I mean, I can't believe, I, I, I sort of do, because I know that the astrology echoes the mm -hmm. Civil War and all that. But can you imagine, I mean, I've, I've followed politics now about 25 years in the U.S. If you had told me that we'd be in this place where Dick Cheney and Liz Cheney are saying oh, what they're saying. No. I mean, this oh. is just nuts. It's totally I nuts. I never We're thought in this... Dick Cheney and I would stand on the same side of any fence. Oh, no, no. no. I did. mean, he was Darth Vader before. I mean, he was the, he was the top Vader. of the chain of, you know, we used to think, oh, my God, that's as... <laughs> as yeah, I don't know what's up with this timeline, but it's all super messed up. Yeah, I know. We're, it, it's crazy. But one word of warning, everyone. What? If you've never seen the, the story of the frog that can't get the scorpion that can't get across a river so the frog helps it get across and then this when they get to the shore the scorpio scorpion stings the frog and kills it and when the frog's dying scorpion said what did you expect i'm a scorpion so sure. we may be the frog <laughs> oh, well i know but i mean look it, it, the thing about the chinese is that at least you know they're pulling Maybe for the u.s you know, yes. I mean, it's again, like, it's like John Bolton, who would have thought, right? So John Bolton and Dick Cheney, they would probably be at war with everybody if they could, because they're, they're mm -hmm. so pro-US, but at least they're pro-US. What I can't take is this, is this, you know, orange menace making friends with Putin and Kim Jong-un. Yeah. That just, to me, is completely out of bounds. I'm sorry, you know, doesn't cut it with me at all. And I think the sleeping giant is this stuff coming up with Russia and all these outsiders. This has been going on for a while. And they're about ready to spread the news. Well, so what's interesting is Iran is more Kamala, apparently, and Russia is I was more... gonna say I didn't think Iran liked uh but... well no, it's a you understand they're they're operating from a place of convenience. Okay. They know that Trump is dumb enough to bomb Tehran. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know. It's either that or a hurricane, right? He's kind of weighing it. I mean yeah, well he can just Tehran take a or a hurricane. Yet. I, I honestly think Iran and is really just playing the numbers. Yeah, they're not all about women having rights and all that jazz. I get that. But um, they also don't want to be bombed. That's true. That's true. Now, what did you think about the RFK on the being the, stopping the ballots in Michigan? Is that going to make any difference? Because they went. Oh, I, actually, I feel after really reviewing the laws and the changes they made in Michigan, I'm feeling very good about Michigan. Okay. I don't think any of those shenanigans are really going to have any 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 real effect. 
Um, much like I feel really good about Wisconsin because of the law changes they made. They were all, if you, um, so there's a couple different kinds of laws. You can do regressive, you can do uh, expansive. Um, anything that's expansive is good. Anything regressive or, or anything consolidates is bad. Mm -hmm. Right. You don't want to restrict right. the number of voters. You want to blow it up. We do better the more people vote. In fact, you can see it in the polls. We do better in the polls that have larger sample sizes. Okay. Okay. I mean, but also historically, we just do better when everyone votes. Um, so, uh, so when I look at those states, state by state, like I think some, there's going to be some craziness going down in Nebraska. What? I didn't uh, think got, Nebraska were, was and, in play. No, what's interesting is there's always a part of Nebraska in play because the way they do their electoral college yeah, that's single. by congressional district. So, you know, so you're, you're good. Oh, it. Nebraska's got two choice and I'm actually working on that show. It's so complicated. I'm still working on that show to explain Nebraska on the choice on their choice ballot. They have two different laws. One that uh, codifies choice as a thing, and the other one that super doesn't. Um, <laughs> and so it's going to be really interesting. They're the only state with two choice laws: one that that does the the that gives women the choice, and the one that does not. So, and and I'm also looking at voter uh, registration levels in Nebraska and and demographics on that end. And the stuff I'm seeing is really interesting. And Nebraska doesn't have that many people in it. It doesn't take a lot of people to change the math in these small states. Like most of these states don't even have the same number of registered voters as Dallas County. Wow. So, yeah. So mm -hmm. when I look at that, I'm like, 25,000 votes. That's nothing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we get spoiled. But you can tell how desperate the Republicans really are getting when... Um, they raid the house of elderly LULAC chair people and demand their DNA. And I don't know how they did that because you're not supposed to be able to get their DNA until they're in custody. And, you know, you talk about a population that kind of almost sort of doesn't vote all the time. Go make them mad because they're picking on granny. I mean, I, I can't imagine what the mental state. Well, we've been around Republicans in Texas too long. We gave up on worrying about their mental state. We used to try to figure out if they had minds, but right. And oh, did I saw the funniest clip off ESPN? There was a woman reporter that was at one of the football games, one of the beginning football football games, and she's she she's just one of she's just one of their cub reporters. And Ted Cruz walked by her, and she made the barf. I'm going to barf face. Oh, I saw that. <laughs> she did this. Yeah. And, and and she said she reported back to ESPN. That was kind of everybody around her's at reaction to him. Yeah, most Republicans statewide do 10 points better than Ted Cruz. Oh, mm. my. Sean. No, oh, I know. Ted, what is Ted Cruz's chances of winning? Oh, shit. I think it, excuse my French, but I think it's around a three point game at this point. It's within the margins. I mean, yeah, we're I don't trust, I don't trust Texas at all mm -hmm. because it's been, here before um but it's I'm definitely right now colin allred got so much free media yesterday mm -hmm. with liz cheney uh endorsing him and uh i actually did a whole list today on my show of all the republicans that are are backing harris that republicans for harris and what their positions are and what offices they've held just went right down the list and it's like five six of my little slides on my show. Um, incredible. I've never seen anything like that in my life. No. Um, and uh, I'm gonna tell you right now, no, not even Republicans like like him. So what, what Dick Cheney and Liz Cheney and all those other Republicans do is they give the moderate Republicans that are that have been told that they're going to hell if they ever vote Democrat, because that's a thing that they used to tell them all the time in Texas. It gives them permission and absolvement from going to hell. Like they won't go to hell if they vote this one time. So um, I feel like if I was Ted Cruz, he's had a really bad 48 hours. I'd be buying real estate in Cancun.
Andre, what's Ted yeah. Cruz look like astrologically? Well, I, I have yet to study the Colin Allred chart, but I, I'm putting him in the same column as Josh Hawley. I think they're both vulnerable based on the following year, but uh, patterns, but I, I got to check. I know what I remember I had said to you, I don't know about Missouri, but then when I looked at, uh, what's his name? Lucas, I think his Lucas, name is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Lucas, yeah, I thought, wow, this looks yeah, Missouri this looks is weird, good. man. I've been looking at that one too. It's got, there's juice there for sure. Yeah, exactly. And then, and then the Colin Allred, uh, and based on where Cruz is going, if, if I see something, you know, it'd be great to have a birth time, but even with a birthday, I think he's April 15th. Yeah. That's Aries. Oh, I got to check it out. Beautiful. Yeah. But, you yeah. know, the thing is, Andre, when he would be looking at Bush, I'm Bush, when he would be looking at Biden, he'd say, yeah, he's got some stuff here. But, you know, I think he'll come out, but you know who looks really good is Kamala. <laughs> Oh yeah, no, I know that that that, that to me. Really you know, the thing is that I had such a hard time with the you know the fact that I, I looked at I predicted a good debate for Biden and then it didn't turn out like that at all. So then, but as the days passed, I thought, no, I got this right. It's just that I I didn't see the the full picture, which was that Trump was just you know ultra victorious, whatever. He sealed his own fate. He set it up because that's why he was saying shouldn't have debated him because he'd still be there. <laughs> Mm -hmm. you know, some, sometimes you do too well because that those stations near the debate are not good for him and I kept thinking how is it possible that this guy just dodged the bullet literally and then you know he was getting oh uh, Eileen Cannon came in which by the way that's another thing what? the uh, uh, Wiseman and McCord are nearly certain that that's not going to stand it's being appealed and, oh, the, yeah. and they're gonna it is so, up, so right? bizarro that that's going to come back right so you know, it's just that I think what drives people nuts is that they're like watching a boxing match and they want the knockout. But this guy is being pounded. You know, it's like death by a thousand cuts. It's a slow sort of process. Mm -hmm. It's going that way. You just have to be patient. That's how I see it. Right. And the, the one that's going over the January 6th, what's her first, what's her name? Uh, the judge? Chatkin. Yeah, she's not, she, she's she's not, not hearing. Chatkin. Yeah. She's not, it's not like Mar Marshawn, okay, we'll hold it up. No, well, she's saying no. I that's the one I had, I did a reading on that. I have yeah. a little group of people I taught to row, and every once in a while we get together and we read. <clears throat> and we read about the January 6th, because that was the day that they had told Smith he could start presenting documents to the court. Yeah. All those documents are public record. That means all the stuff that was hidden in grand juries, all those people that spoke, that's all going to be out before the election. This could be the fall that you're seeing, Andre. Well, I'll tell you about Ms. Missouri. What I like about Missouri is their choice ballot initiative um, is uh, they want to protect. This is this is kind of the short and quick version of their law that they're trying that's on the ballot. Protect reproductive freedom and ability to make effective decisions around reproductive health including abortion that's that's it no yeah. numbers no weeks no nothing yeah right. I mean, the other thing is though do you have any comment to make on this thing where like in 2020 a lot of people voted against trump but they voted republican down ballot and uh, some of the speculation was that because of all the you know defund the police and that some people were doing that but no, what republicans I'm see i so uh Trump gets nominated by the Republican primary, which makes up about 8% of the Republicans of the 40, you know, five, because it's 45, 45. And then you've got the 10% of, of, of undecided or, or, you know, independent voters. And of that 45, 8% of it are primary voters. So you have a huge chunk of voters that are not primary voters that vote Republican and all politics is local and they'll view Trump as an outsider and a weirdo and whatever, but they'll go into their ballot and, and go uh, and click the, the, the other Republicans. Now what's interesting about Texas and why I think Texas is even more in play is that the Republicans like idiots because they thought it was going to help them got rid of straight ticket. You used to be able to walk into tex into a polling location hit D or hit R and walk out. You voted for all your Democrats straight down the ballot on the general. Don't even have to worry about it. Well, they got rid of that. 
which is at that very moment, they started losing all of their urban state house seats, whatever judicials they still had in urban and suburban counties. And it's just continued to eat away because you have to actually go in and hit all the buttons. So all those were Trump voters are going to go in and hit the Trump button and prom and might leave. And then you've got those other Republicans that are going to go down ballot. So it's a mixed vote. It, they, they don't vote as weirdly Republicans don't necessarily vote as a block. <laughs> so when, when was that, by the way, when did they get rid of that? Four that, years uh, ago. It was four years. 2017. Ago. Okay. Well, but then you see what that's happening there is that I think the reason is because they know how vulnerable Trump is because you could get a Republican that would, say, I'm not voting for this guy and just down ticket. You know what, it was in 2017. Else. Mom, do you remember when that was? It was before Cruz was elected the, um, against Trump. Oh, it was, it was before that. Years. Okay. 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 Good. I no, know. Who said it was about. a while ago. I remember reading about it going, wow. Yeah, because I remember when it hit and the Dems were saying it was so unfair because, you know, we have lazy voters too. Yeah, we do. Um. <laughs> But uh, it was it gave us a grand chance to educate them about voting all the way down ballot. And, you know, uh, that's how we get rid of the uh, judge. And then these were not this was a Republican judge in Collin County who used to show up to court in his pajamas. Um, anyway, it kind of helps you weed those guys out. But it does require a bit more working. But when a friend I took a friend of mine to the polls because he had just had surgery and couldn't and they brought the pad out the little thing this is before we had the paper ballots i think the transition happened at the same time that they created paper ballots sean i think so too which is four to six years before then in texas you bloated into a black box and you had no the hell idea where it was going and there would be election people show up when you're running a poll we have to check your ballots i used to tell them no you don't unless you can prove to me it's not recording you're not getting in there but um, when I and I've run the polls, so you, you have a lot more power. What scares me now for the poll workers is like in Florida, where they're going to have their own police. We they're had the literally county voting sheriff. police, voting right. police. <clears throat> we had the sheriff. Yeah, but the feds said they're going to go in there and, and check on them, too, to make yeah. sure they're not being abusive. <sighs> well, but, once that's the thing, once the election's over, the job's done. Yeah. The feds can do whatever the hell they want. They'll be there the next day. Mm -hmm. Or a few hours after the work's already been done. Yeah. It's really it's a non-measure in my opinion. Sean, remember our DOJ people that showed up in 2008? Their yeah. guys that showed up in little polo shirts with DOJ on their thing, and they'd go up and they'd harass our Obama workers that were outside the polls, con mm -hmm. convincing people to vote for Obama. This was on election day. That's what got me out of my shower that morning. Someone said, Nancy, some guy just came up. He's from the DOJ and he says, We can't stand here. And I said, Can you put him on the phone? And she said, no, he's running across a parking lot. And I went, holy crap, do we have a problem? We got our, the Republicans doing that scam stopped in Dallas County by noon. <clears throat> we had got, let every poll worker know they yeah, show they're up. They're fraud. They're fraud. Tell, tell them. Yeah, Obama had they, some wicked good text chains. <laughs> right. We, we used, we'd say, you either stall them till we can get them. If you can see what car they run to, get their tag. And if you can't, you know, just tell them we're on to you. And by noon, we had no more reports. They had reports until 7 o'clock p.m. Houston time because they never caught them all. That's how broad across the state. It wasn't just where we lived. Mm -hmm. It was all across the state. So you have to really educate your people at the polls well. Yeah. Are you poll working this time? No, I'm too old. Yeah, I'm too That's old. That's literally true. I mean, there are people, trust me, there are people older. But the best thing about COVID was it drew out a whole new generation of poll workers. And they're so good and they're so kind. And I talk to them every time I go in and said, I did this 40 years ago. But no, it, it's, it really takes a lot of concentration and work. I mean, and I don't need the money, so. Yeah, yeah. But I've gotten several of my watch, my viewers that have decided to go poll work. Oh, that, and that, I can't believe the volunteers. Mm -hmm. Every time I turn around, I'm hearing people or they're, they're their children are volunteering. Mm -hmm. Did you see that poor guy that actually went up to that house for Trump? Did you see that video? Oh. It was on her doorbell. And she said, get the ass out of here. 
Yeah. Oh, he was, he was, They're he very wanted. adamant. Yeah, but you know, if a Trump person came, I wouldn't be like that to them. I'd just say, I'm sorry, honey. I'm not stupid. Oh, if they knock on my door, their their data is garbage. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, our house is so full of Democratic voters. They'd have There's so much Democratic primary voter history that it would just be like, wow, your data <laughs> guy is literally on a beach somewhere just kicking it. To explain what Sean's saying, doing her job. In, in the state of Texas, the only way you can tell if someone's a Republican or Democrat is what primary they voted in, because we don't have stated parties. And we have a lot of people who vote in both primaries. Right. Not at the same cycle. Not at the same time. We'll bounce back and forth. Because uh, it's as much as 8%. It's a, a real number. Wow. And uh, the reason is, is because, quite honestly, when you're a Democrat in like Collin County or an, a suburban purple county, you know, given whichever state house district you're living in, that your vote for the Democrat is going to be in the general, but your primary vote is voting for the least crazy of the Republicans. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you've got... Perfectly good Democrats uh, uh, in these in these suburban uh, slash rural counties, kind of in the blurry area, that are Democrats. Oh, you're cutting out. But they are also not dumb. Right. So now, listen. One of my favorite people I've been watching lately is David Feldman. Have you guys watched him? He is so funny. He says. He's been studying all this. And he says, listen, I think, and this is me, I think Kamala's going to win by landslide. Mm -hmm. And he said, and tell me how, and this, this question is for you, Sean. Tell me how someone could be the down ticket. Someone could be a Democrat, could be six, seven points above. And then Kamala comes in at 1% difference. He said, how can that happen? Well, it does happen. I mean, it it's uh, it doesn't happen on the bigger on the big scales normally. But yeah, remember, all politics is local, mm -hmm. so they know who they're voting for locally because they. Although this cycle, with the amount of money Kamala has, um, she outraised Trump two and a half. I yeah, know, and people are coming out to vote for her, down and they want to make sure she has the backup she needs to change the laws and get rid of that Supreme Court. Yeah, there's a lot so of we'll vote vote for whoever will change. that they're going to be able to pay for with that money, and uh, yeah. and 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 it's going to be really interesting to see how all that plays out. Right, but I know for a fact they're knocking on doors. They're they're um, they're pulling Obama people out of the retirement. Grade, yeah. Um, and getting operatives out there that I have not seen actually out there out there in a long time. Mm -hmm. uh, they're they're doing everything they can, and they can afford to do everything they want to do. Yeah. Uh, so you know, so really, I mean, you're you you the amount of money matters so much. Plus, Trump's spending his money very inefficiently. A lot of people in his campaign are there for a paycheck. Yeah, and not to say that that's not it is in the Democratic Party. Sure, it is. Well, he pays for people no, to come. Everyone to gets paid, right? yeah, and he needs but money for his. These uh... guys are just going through the motions. Either they think they got it wrapped up in rural Pennsylvania or whatever, or for or they're just there to get their paycheck, knowing that Trump's a moron, but not not their problem. You know? Yeah. Um, they're really I... there for a. They're really there for their their friend who's the state house rep mm -hmm. or running for sheriff or whatever other races are down ballot. They're there for those guys. Oh, and Trump. Yeah. Well, the other and thing is, I think we should all applaud Andre. When you look at how much money the people who were taking much run, money from Russia to pump their line, because they're, you know, they, they, the DOJ cited news sites and different groups that were feeding social influencers and more to come by the way they're gonna yeah there's more to come and there was one guy who says well i just couldn't figure out why i was getting a hundred thousand dollars a week to produce a show and pump ukraine as being wrong and i was thinking you know linda maybe we were on the wrong side of the outside <laughs> the paycheck side but why do you gotta salute andre because yeah. uh if they could have gotten if andre has a real soul and i always suspected he did but he could have made so much money pumping Trump because oh, you're so good and so good at 
saying <laughs> Oh, no way. You could, well, that, you know, that's not going to happen. Sorry. <laughs> actually, actually, we would rather not go to hell. Yeah. No, well, I mean, I... Actually, I, mean, last, mm -hmm. <laughs> I talked to you about it one time, Andre. I said I was looking for other astrologers just to kind of see what kind of balance. And these guys were so... 180 degrees from any other astrologer who yeah. were not even with my Weasley understanding of it. I'm going, where the hell are these pot people? But they got thousands and thousands of subscribers. That you oh, no, heard. they've got 100,000. Yeah. I think I think you know you're in trouble with an astrologer when they have 100,000 subscribers. Yeah. Well, I mean, there, are, there are some that are good. I mean, it's just that it's just the way this country is. I mean, I remember in 2020, it was some of these astrologers you're mentioning it's this one guy, he called himself doctor something or other, and I looked at his explanation, and he actually knew some astrology. He, he was using all the terms, and he was making the case until he got to the critical point, and he just ran right over the thing that I understand would mean difference. he would lose. He just ignored that, and he, he said something like, oh, this means that everybody will be surprised that he won, because by then there was this expectation that he might lose, right? Um, well, no, it meant that he was going to lose. And uh, but people like that, by the way, they'll just set up a different channel and, and start a new story because there's always people that will follow you if they like the message, even if the message is completely incorrect. And, right. you know, the other thing I noticed, too, do you notice that astrologers, they were ch kind of following the polls. A lot of astrologers last year, late in the year after the Israeli problem in October, mm -hmm. Biden's numbers really dropped. And there were all these astrologers saying, oh, Trump is going to win. You know, because mm -hmm. they were seeing the polls. But, you know, you've got to kind of look forward and keep the whole picture in mind and well, things can yeah. really change. So, Again, yeah. And may I bring up that he kept looking at the chart. He was worried mm -hmm. about Biden, but not wanting us to be frightened. But he kept mm -hmm. saying, Linda, Kamala looks so good. Yeah, I remember. He looks so that. good. So I was like, well, obviously Biden is going to win because why would she be so happy? Well, which, by the way, now Biden, Biden has the best of both worlds. He, mm -hmm. he she wins. He is. He looks like because that's in fact in November, his energy is quite good. Where it'll he's, it'll show his wisdom. Teenager. Instead of being you know the the old guy, he's now all of a sudden the wise guy in a in a positive way. Yeah. So yeah, no, for sure. I mean, Kamala's. I, it didn't occur to me though that she would be. He was the one that was gonna win. Yeah, but it's years perfect. ago, about a year into when I started this my show, I said that President Biden, I thought he was going to win a second term, but I saw him hand the, the what do you call it? Baton. baton. The baton to Kamala. I said she'll be the first female president of the United States. I said this several years ago. Mm -hmm. And I kept seeing two. So I thought it would be his second term, maybe two years in the second term. What it was is she would take what would have been his second term. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and she's no, going to win on her own accord, which is probably even better. A hundred percent. Yeah, because it's true. Because if if it's passed, if it's passed, it's not quite as powerful as if people yeah. actually vote and for you. And I look at you know, Biden as a, Biden's going to be, and historically speaking, will be one of the most amazing presidential candidates ever. Um, yeah. He is how he and Kennedy, the the good one, not, the one that's dead, not this moron that killed bears, um, <laughs> uh, Teddy. Uh, personal. They, those two, you know, fully endorsed Obama. Remember that? I mean, mm -hmm. and then oh, Biden you're became, talking and about we, Ted Kennedy. Yeah. Yeah. Ted, yeah, yeah, Ted Teddy, Kennedy. yeah. And, um, and, and we watched Biden usher the first African American president of this country ever in the history of this country. And now what is he doing for an on freaking core? Never mind. He saved us from COVID. He's literally ushering the first female African American president ever in the history of our country there will be, there will be no other presidents like biden for the rest ever. i mean forever now yeah, he is but... so unique talk about the right guy the right yeah. place the right time like and a wise man he's a wise he's, man. Oh, yeah, he he's is such man. a nice man he is really so great they wanted this to go to the convention and bring up other people all oh, the hell with that he said, you know what? I kind of can't help but, you know, he's a scorp. Kind of mm -hmm. can't help but he said, oh, hell no, you're going to get Kamala in there, and that's my decision. Oh, no, he totally um, backdoored that whole thing during his resignation. He's like, and 
<laughs> the terms are you know, you know her in. all that and, and money I, there were people who didn't know what the terms were until he said it right there at the resolute desk you oh, know, by the way it, it's it's even a even if you just want to say in the end they're all politicians it, it's the right political decision because if you remove kamala from there you really oh, yeah. take a shot at the african-american base that is not a good idea they would have been really angry and, and rightfully so because Kamala is a really competent person. You know, let's not even say woman, man. She's just really competent. Yeah. Which women is why. Over 60% of the vote for Democrats. Are you yeah. kidding? Yeah. yeah. And yeah. it's true, the rumors, that she is a tough boss, but it's not, she's cruel. She just expects you to do your work. That's, she's, yeah. I mean, if a man does that, that's okay. But if a woman does it, she's a, you know what? Yeah, no, absolutely. Absolutely. But, you know, um, I'm as far well, as I'm concerned. Right now, I just told him go in there and make me a doggone sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> I got to tell you guys a quick story before we end. One time, I made this beautiful chicken salad. Oh, I had I sliced avocados and tomatoes with my lettuce with my chicken, and I had worked all day, cleaned the house, fed the kids. And I sat down to have my salad, have my show on my TV, and my little boy comes in, filthy, just. You know, you know how boys are just black with dirt, scrubby fingers. And he goes, oh, gee, mom, that looks good. <laughs> he took a bite. <laughs> he just put his oh. fingers on my salad. I just said, you know what? You can have it. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, now you've now that you've baptized it with your dirt. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, gosh. Well, you guys, this has been absolutely wonderful. Thank you so much. It's a lovely way to spend a Saturday afternoon. I really enjoyed it. I absolutely. really enjoyed it. Thank you so much. So, uh, you guys, well, we got to do this again, too. Well, okay. We should do it after the, after we've got a debate on Tuesday. Let's do it after the debate. Yeah, we'll do it after the debate. It'll be fun. That All sounds right. good. Maybe on, on Andres, because he knows how to really sort everybody out and post it on Post I'm doing a video with Andre anyway, so. Yeah, sure. yeah I always do a video with Andre. All right, you guys, thank okay, you. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone.